Not that I'm counting, but it's been 75 days since I was last on the Monroes. When I read about doing these Monroes, if you're coming at them from the Tindrum side, um, everybody mentions the, uh, the lower slopes and the parts of the ancient woodland. And I've seen things like this up in like the Cairngorms and that, just like, on online, on videos. I've never actually been through it. But now that I'm approaching it, you can actually just see how impressive it is. And it would have been absolutely amazing to see the regions of Scotland covering this all those centuries ago. But, like most things, humans decided to come in and have their way. And uh, they thought better. They thought the wood and the trees would be better used somewhere else. So I've only got these small pockets of ancient Caledonian woodland. But it would be absolutely amazing to just go back in time and see what it was actually like. So here we have the summit of Ben Du Craig. I would love to show you the views, but as you can see, I have none. Uh, I'm still in the cloud. Uh, hopefully, like I keep saying, I hope this goes away, because I don't want to be stuck in the cloud all day. Um, I want to get at least some views. Maybe when I drop down to the Bilax, I might get it. But at the moment, there's nothing. There's still plenty of time. It's uh, quarter past 10 in the morning, so that's taking me three hours, 15 minutes to get up here. Like I say, a lighter pack. Um, you'll be up here in under three hours. Not a problem, I don't believe. That's all dependent on like, uh, fitness and such. Some people might absolutely blast it. But yes, I'm going to sit here, get some water on board, get some food on board, and um, do a quick turnaround and press on to the next Monroe, which is Ben Os, that sits at 1,029 metres. So let's get that done. So I literally just came off the top of Ben Du Craig, which is just there. You can see it in the distance, hopefully, just up here. And uh, I must have been walking about two minutes and the clouds here have just parted and um, the sun's out. It all happened over the space of 20, 30 seconds. It just all started opening up. I can't see the summits of any of the other minerals around here, but something is happening. I'm just going to meander towards the edge of uh, this high point here, which sits about 960 something meters and see what develops because I don't want to drop into the cloud and miss what's going on here. And as you can see, 20 seconds later, it's clouded over again. Just a small parting for maybe a minute and it's gone. Hopefully we'll get some more of that.
So there we have it, Ben Oss is now in the bag, excuse me. Second one for the day, all I've got to do now is get myself uh, some scran down me, get myself admin a wee bit, I'm going to spend some time here and then I'll be heading over in that direction over my right shoulder, um, that's towards Ben Louie but I have to drop off um, the, the side of the hill, do a loop round and come up, back up kind of the rear, the, the non-conventional way to get up Ben Louie. Um, it was a guy I was speaking to and he was saying about how because of the clag it's quite hard to navigate so I am going to need to keep my bearings and keep my wits about me on this one because at the moment I'm above the cloud but will not be long and we'll be back down into that uh, pea super as they say but without further ado get some admin get myself ready and uh, get moving Realise I've got my cap on backwards. I was just letting myself cool down. Anyway, I <laughs> don't know if this is a style I'll stick with. I'm uh, been going on the go. I have been on the go for about an hour now on the top of Benos, and it's been quite a bit of heather bashing. There's been bits where the path has disappeared. Um, you just need to to nav it, and then you pick it up again. It is a bit tricky, so it slowed my progress a wee bit. I have dropped way below the cloud, as you can see over here to the to the west. I've got to climb all the way back up into that. I'm at 860 meters. About 270 metres of ascent to go. This has been tricky. It really has. I think I've said that, I don't know how many times. But navigating this in this thick cloud has just been constant check bearings constantly. Make sure I'm going the right way. And there is no definitive path. Every now and then you'll get a little section, but the majority. There's no path, so it is all navigating, all the way. <sighs> Not long now, hopefully. See, this is another one that's clagged in. The wind is a bit, it's a bit more blustery than it's been on the other two. And that's because it's coming from the west, so there's nothing really to block the wind uh, coming up the side of Ben Louis. So it's coming up and rolling over the top. Not really want to pitch a tent up here, so what I'm going to do is drop down off of here onto the Belak between here and Benaclave. Depending on time and weather, I might try and get Ben Clave done tonight and then try and find somewhere on the Belak to pitch the tent. <sighs> so that's me now down at the, the Belak between the two main roads, between Ben Loy and Benaclave, there's very little wind down here. I'm just at the, the base of the cloud. Um, that's sitting at 795 metres. I did contemplate going up and doing Benaclave today, um, but I've been on the go for 10 and a half hours now, 
and that's not including the time that I got up at which was three hours before I set off so in total was that 12 13 hours and I'm pretty pooped so I think I might just find somewhere here that's in the, the shelter get the tent up and um, because I can hear running water so I'll go and stock up my water everything like that just get myself admin and before I know it I'll be awake get Ben and Clave done and then back up and over Ben Louie um, to head on home <sighs> I am pretty pooped and I just hope that this ground isn't all rocky I just want to find a nice little bit and be done with it for the night It's now half six at night and that's me set up I'll uh, give you a quick look inside the tent because um, I know people like to see other people's setups and uh, I'll give you a wee quick overview of the Sierra Designs High Route 3000 As you can see it looks a bit um, skew with but it's actually a asymmetrical tent so rather than having the poles opposite each other they're at an angle so it creates this kind of this kind of looks crooked shape what it does though is the inside is raised up at both ends so you get actually a higher headroom inside the tent but let's go and have a wee look at it so it has this J-zip on this side it's a full size to get you in and out and on the other side you've got this little crescent and that basically is um, it goes into the other side of the tent which is called a gear store that's what they're calling it so you can put all your uh, just your rucksack and what have you down there um, it does look a bit flappy inside but having had it in the garden and tested it already basically when you're in it it pushes that all out so it's not an issue at all I've got this little um, mat that I found in Tesco's for about three pounds or something like that I thought I'll give that a whirl just a little reflective mat um, my Rab Ascent 500 Seat of Summit pillow and then there's my food bag and everything ready for cooking tonight and when I'm done with it I'll just pop it through there out of the gear store I'll give you a little sh uh, look so this is a non-freestanding tent um, so basically you put you, your walking poles as the supports the good thing I like about this is you pitch the outer first so even if it's raining the first thing that goes up is the, the fly and then the inner just basically clips to it what you can also do if you're pretty much guaranteed a decent night if you put your walking poles upside down so the spikes are facing upwards you can actually support the the bug net on its own without the fly so that just becomes a, a standalone I think obviously places like America and Portugal wherever they've got warmer weather um, I want to say Portugal because I, I saw someone recently doing a, a trail through Portugal I think that would be where you get more use from that in Scotland I don't know that I'm going to chant it um, unless I'm guaranteed hot weather and, uh, and no rain which is never a guarantee in Scotland so all that's left for me to do now tonight is just get everything ready I'm going to cook some dinner um, I bought a little treat for myself, one of those real termat meals it cost me £10 I thought let's see what all the fuss is about so I'll report back in the morning once I've had my dinner and everything I am just going to get straight in for a sleep and that is going to be me for the night and then tomorrow get up there, get Ben a clave and then I have to go back up and over Ben Louie to drop down towards the car so until tomorrow I will uh, bid you a good night and I'll see you then Good morning guys uh, It's quarter past five in the morning I've had a decent sleep the, uh, It was raining through the night The wind's picking up a wee bit just now uh, I'm just going to get myself up Get some breakfast on to go Get everything packed down And uh, 
Head on up Beniclave. Absolutely toasty out here last night. Uh, I think my watch, which I was ha hanging up there, read 22 degrees at one point. So, definitely held the heat in here. But let's have a peek outside and see what this weather's doing. Oh wow. So, there's a bit of an inversion going on, the clouds and what have you. Stunning. Right, let's get up and get at it. As you can see, the weather is taking a big turn again. Standard Scottish weather. Can't even see the base of the Munro that I'm about to do. One thing I want to point out about this tent, which I really like about it, is because you, it's an outer pitch first, you can actually just set this um, shelter up. So as I've been dismantling everything, you can actually keep it inside the dry, and I've just been popping it into the, the Bergen or the rucksack, ready to go. I just need to drop this, and then head up the Munro. There we go guys, that's the summit of Benaclave. That's the fourth Monroe out of uh, the Tindrum 4 and the smallest. I'm glad I kept that one for last. Only took me about 30 minutes to get up here from the Bilac where I camped last night. So a fairly short Monroe um, once you're up. So the four Monroes I've done, um, absolutely brilliant. I'm glad that I've got the region done. Um, another four ticked off. Uh, the icing on the cake was that little inversion that happened above uh, Ben Oss. That's been the saving grace. I would have been gutted if this was all kind of fog the whole time. But yeah, my route now was to head back over Ben Lui, um, a route that I devised to save me going back over Ben Oss. However, my route was planned using the contours on a map, but being up there and seeing how steep and craggy it is I've just decided I'm actually going to drop down to the road which is just to the north there um, down the proven path and do what uh, road walking back to Tindrum it's going to be about 12 miles overall however I am doing the West Highland Way next month so I'm going to use it as a bit of training for that give myself a couple of hours and uh, just see how everything uh, everything goes on flat walking because this is pretty much the kit that I'm going to be taking on that. As I said earlier on also, I'm going to give you a wee insight into the tent and um, give you a wee view of that later on and do a full insight, show you about it because I've not seen many of them on the market over here in the UK so I think it's something people might be quite interested in but I'll save that for another day. Overall, it's been a cracking two days on the hills as always, so many lessons learned. Um, you always learn what kit's good, what you'll use, what you'll not use. Um, and yeah, never a day wasted. But until next time, I'm going to sign off there and start making my way off this hill and start the long trudge back to the car, which I'm hoping is still there. Until next time, just behind me, over that bridge there, um, take a right and you got the path to Ben Louie. I've obviously just came down it. 
and I was going to finish the vlog earlier but I need to let people know about this that is the worst path I've ever been on the worst track it's just so boggy it's like knee deep bog absolutely hideous so if you're ever thinking about doing Ben Louis from the northern side then just be warned that is absolutely atrocious I say 800 meters of forestry is taking me an hour to get through but I will now finish the vlog and I'll see you on the next one.